Welcome class to chapter three, the morphology and pacement, chapter three review for chapter test. We're gonna start off by saying electrocardiography is the recording of the heart's electrical impulse by way of sensors, which are called electrodes, which are placed on arms, legs, and chest. As you all know, the right leg electrode is used as a grounder to minimize the hazards of electric shock to the patient and to also stabilize the EKG, which is true because our body is a conductor of electricity. Have you ever thought about whenever you rub across a carpet and you go to touch a doorknob, you get a shock? It's because our body carries energy or electric throughout our system. I wouldn't try doing this, but if you turn... <clears throat> if you rub your feet across the carpet and you turn off your lights and you touch a metal doorknob, you will actually see a spark. Same thing as when you rub your a balloon across your hair and it starts to the balloon, your hair starts clinging to the balloon. It's because our body carries energy. So we use our right leg as a grounder, as a stabilizer to not shock ourselves from when we get in the EKG, being that our body has energy conductors already. Therefore, a lead is simply an electrocardiographic picture of what your the energy levels of what your heart is doing. It's taking a, a photographic complexity of what the energy or the electric currents that are going through your heart are doing. A 12 lead EKG provides 12 different views of the heart's electrical activity. It is 12, even though there are 10 leads, true enough, if you think about it in class, we have 10 leads. You have four limb leads and you have six chest leads. That equals 10. But what it does, it takes a photo or it collects information from 12 different views of your heart based off of those 10 leads because you got to remember your four limb leads or the three limb leads that are active also not only have lead one lead two and lead three those three leads are also AVL AVR and AVF There are three different types of leads on the EKG. You have your bipolar leads, which are limb leads that view the heart's current traveling between two limbs. You have one limb is designated the positive pole and the other limb is the negative pole. Think of the positive pole as a seeing eye that sees where the heart's current is traveling at that specific time and destination that is collecting information. The bipolar leads, the right arm is always negative. The left leg is always positive and the right arm, the left arm, I'm sorry, the left arm can either be positive or negative depending on which direction the heart current is picking up the picture at. If you join leads one, two, and three at the middle, you get what they call the triaxle diagram, which is here. I know I'm not the best drawer, but I tried. If you join, if you join leads one, two, and three at their ends, you get a triangle, which we call Eitoven's triangle. Cardiac research pioneer William Eitoven stated that lead one plus lead three will equal lead three, lead two. Sorry. This is called Eitoven's law. It basically means that the height of the QRS in one plus the height of the QRS in three will give you, will equal the height it is in lead two. Eitoven law can help determine if an EKG is truly abnormal or if the leads are inadvertently placed in the wrong limb. So you see, I have a little small diagram. So if we take lead one plus lead three equals lead two, lead two should be taller than one. If you take the amplitude amount of lead one and lead three 
and add those two together, it should equal the amplitude of lead two. And when I say amplitude, it means the height of your R wave, the height of it. So your bipolar leads are leads one, two, and three, which lead one reads from right arm to left arm, which the positive pole is your what? Left arm. Lead two reads from left arm to left leg, which makes your left leg positive. And lead three reads from right arm, which means now, instead of your left arm being positive, now it's negative, and it's reading to left leg. So if you take Eitovin's triangle and you read it again, right arm is negative to left arm, which is positive, that's lead one. If we take left arm to left leg, which is positive, that's lead two. And if we take left arm, which now is negative, and we read it from left leg, which is lead three, left leg still stays positive, which forms Eitovin's triangle. Augmented leads, which are another set of limb leads, they are unipolar leads, which means they are only positive. They use the midway point between the other two limbs as the negative reference point. Remember again, the right leg is a grounder lead. It has no significance into the uh, calculations of how the QRSs are formed. There are three augmented leads. You have AVR, AVL, and AVF. They are in the front of the lead stands. The A in front of the lead stands for augmented. The V stands for voltage. The R stands for right arm. The L stands for left arm. And the F stands for left foot or left leg. Since augmented leads look at the heart at an angle, if you join them in the middle, they form a different looking triaxial diagram. This is the augmented lead triaxial diagram. And this is the limb leads. See how they're different? If you join all the frontal leads together, leads 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF, you get what we call the hexiaxial diagram. This is, used, this is used to help determine the direction of the current flow of the heart. And there you go. All minute leads read such as AVR reads from right arm to right arm, which your right arm is the positive positive um, pole because you remember augmented leads are only unipolar, so they all going to be positive. AVL, of course, measures from left arm to left arm. AVF is left leg, and your left leg is positive because they're all unipolar. So that means the current is traveling towards that direction. Next lead, the last leads we're going to talk about is pericardial leads or chest leads. These are leads located on the chest. There are also unipolar leads and each one is a positive electrode. The pericardial leads see a wrap around view of the heart from the horizontal plane. The name of the chest leads are V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. The chest leads are placed in intercoastal space, which are the spaces between the ribs. You have the midclavial or midclavier line, which is an imaginary line down from the middle of the clavin, which is your collarbone. Then you have the anterior auxiliary line, is an imaginary line down the front of the axillary or armpit. Then you have the mid axillary line, which is an imaginary line down the middle of the axillary, which is your armpit again. 
<clears throat> Continuous monitoring is used when a patient is hospitalized after they had um, had some kind of heart problems, be it if it's an MI, a mild stroke, um, heart palpitations, tachycardias, anything cardiac they'll do a continuous monitoring for just to make sure that the patient hasn't suffered from an MI. So these are patients who are hospitalized who require continuous EKG monitoring. They're attached to either a three lead or a five lead cable instead of the 10, which allows them to have more um, movability if they can. And it also stops it from causing any undue artifacts. And we'll learn more about artifacts in chapter four. The most commonly used lead leads for continuous monitoring. There are two. You can either use V leads two and MCL or V1. MCL basically means modified chest lead. The one refers to the positive poles located on the chest. It's at the V1 location, which is located at the fourth intercoastal space, right sternal border. So in a normal EKG, we have our six leads. As you can see for the diagram on here, we have our V1, V2, V3, V4, 5, and 6. Now when we're doing continuous monitoring using a 3-lead monitoring, if we want to register what lead 2 is doing, we would place our grounder lead on our left shoulder, and our negative lead will go on our right shoulder, and our positive knee will go below the abdomen. If we do an MCL or V1 view, our right arm becomes the grounder where our left side becomes the negative charge and our MCL or our positive electrode will be placed on the first intercoastal spot um, right septal um, border. So pretty much where we place V1 in a normal EKG. Same place as V1, as we do a three lead. Lead two is by far the most commonly utilized lead for continuous monitoring, as it provides an excellent view of atrial activity, which is signified by the P waves, as well as ventricular activities, which is your QRS. Whereas if they use MCL or V1, it's useful for ass assessing rhythms with wide QRS complex as it can help pinpoint abnormalities in ventricular contraction. <clears throat> Always note that the placement for both these leads is on the subclavial or collarbone area and the chest or lower abdomen instead of on the arms, legs, and chest. Also note that the ground lead may be located somewhere other than the right leg, being that we want the patient, if they are mobile or movable, they can move freely without causing any, to dis, um, any artifacts that are causing any disruption in the continuous monitoring of the patient and their heart. Let's go through EKG truths. So these are EKG truths. These need to be put in memory because you will come back to those truths time and time and time again as we go further into our lesson into EKG. So the first electrocardiographic truth is if an electrical impulse travels toward or parallel to a positive electrode, writes a positive or upright QRS complex on the EKG. And it'll look like this, where you have your baseline and everything is going upward. Your QRS is, looks like a normal QRS. <clears throat> 
if an impulse travels away from a positive or towards a negative electrode, it writes a negative or downward QRS. As you can see from my example, you have your P that's at the negative, the is going downward, your S is now up, and your T. Our next truth is <clears throat> an impulse traveling at a right angle to a positive electrode writes an isoelectric complex, one that is is as much positive as it is negative, meaning it is your your QRS is sit very very close to the baseline. They're not ne they're neither negative or positive. They're kind of in between. And the last truth is, if there is no impulse at all, they won't make any complexes because it'll be a flat line. As you can tell, there are no QRSs complex but you may see some P wave activity. This type of rhythm is called a stall where you have no ventricular activity at all. And as we progress into EKG further, you'll understand what a stall basically stands for. Normal QRS deflection. How should the QRS complex in a normal EKG look? Well, the frontal leads will look like this in leads one, two, three, AVL and AVF. They all should have positive QRS complexes, meaning their QRS complexes should be in the upright position, meaning your R wave should be going up and not down. The normal QRS deflection in the pericardial leads should look like simply as this. V1 or MCL1, because remember, V1 is the same as MCL1, and V2 should be negative first. V3, V4 should be isoelectric, meaning neither negative or positive off the baseline. V5, V6 should be positive, meaning your R wave should be going in the upward direction. Because when you get to V5 and V6, there are more to the left side, which is your strong side of your heart, and it should be going toward your positive current should be going toward the heart's elect, uh, positive current. Normal vectors forces of the heart flow to top to bottom, right to left. A vector is an arrow that points out the general direction of current flow. The current of the heart normally starts in the sinus node, because remember our conduction pathway, every impulse or electrical impulse is supposed to start at the what? Sinus node or other words called the SA node, which is in the top of the right atrium and terminates in the left ventricles on the bottom left of the heart. The vectors representing a normal heart current looks like this. Let's think about the location of the positive pole in all of the frontal leads. So if we're looking at lead one, we know our positive pole is where? Left arm. Same thing with lead two. We know our positive pole is in left leg. Lead three, same thing, left leg. Well, what if we're looking at AVR? Well, here's the trick. Remember, augmented leads are all positive, but remember we said that depending on the view of where it's going, that they take the augmented leads, take the poles in between the two other leads and it makes it the negative. Well, in AVR, we're going away from our positive lead. Therefore, we're going towards the negative. Therefore, our QRS will be what? Negatively deflected. <clears throat> Whereas AVL, we're going toward the positive lead. So therefore, our QRS will be positive. <clears throat> and the same thing with AVF. We're going toward the positive lead. So therefore, we're our QRS will be positive. 
All except AVR have their positive pole on the left arm or left leg. The Hertz current normally travels, remember, top to bottom, right to left. It travels toward or parallel to these positive electrodes on the body's left side, recording a positive complex on the EKG. AVR's positive pole is on the what? Right arm. So therefore, it's traveling in the opposite direction of a normal direction of current flow. The pericordial, let's talk about the pericordial leads. The pericordial leads start out negative in V1 and then go through a trend, what we call a transition zone where they become isoelectric half and half by V3 or V4. Then they become positive in V5 or V6. We look at current flow in the horizontal way. So meaning horizontal meaning so if we take V1, we're looking at it this way in V2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> so if we're looking at the heart at a horizontal, so if we're looking at V1, we're going what? V1 is going away from the positive. And as we go, it changes direction. So. The septum depolarizes from the left to right and the ventricles from right to left. Septal and right ventricular depolarization send the current toward the positive electrode resulting in an initial positive deflection. Then the current travels away from the positive electrode as it heads towards the left ventricle. Hence why V1, as you can tell, the current is going away from the positive pole. So therefore, it writes a negative QRS. Same thing with V2. It's going away from the positive pole. Then V3, V4 is in between. It's neither in a negative pole or a positive pole, which writes an isoelectric EKG. And then V5, V6 are going toward a positive pole. Therefore, it writes a positive QRS. And this concludes our chapter three review for the test. I'm just going to make sure I scan everything so y'all can see all the notes fully of what I wrote down. That way you'll be able to pause and stop and write down anything you want to write down. I will try to scan this into my computer and upload it also as a lesson. Just in case you didn't get all the notes. And it would have all everything I wrote down. If y'all have any questions or comments or you need me to clarify anything you can just go ahead and text me um, you can text me anytime up until six o'clock because my kids have a virtual up until six o'clock done I'm just trying to make sure y'all get all the notes that way y'all have everything and I'll zoom in on this as much as I can
All right, I hope this helps and clears up any questions y'all might have had. As I stated before, if y'all have any questions, you can text me anytime in the morning up until 6 o'clock. I thank y'all and have a nice day. Bye-bye.